everybody doing? Getting ready for lunch? Pleasure to meet you guys. Uh, very excited to be here. Um, so I'd just like to start with a, a little hand raising uh, thing. So we're going to be talking about discovery calls and what are some of the things that makes them successful. So first question, when you have a first initial call with a prospect, how many of you think that it's a good idea to talk about decision authority at the beginning of the call versus towards the end of the call? So how many of you think it's better to start with that question? Raise your hands. How many of you think that it's better to do it towards the end of the call? OK, good. So now here's the interesting question, OK? For those who raise your hands, how many of you are 100% sure that you're correct with your answer? OK, only one. Yeah, you're OK. So here's the deal. You're not alone. Nobody really knows, OK? Everything that's out there right now is based on opinions, anecdotes, stuff that I've learned 20 years ago at Xerox uh, that I've read in a book. There are 10,000 books on Amazon. Nobody really knows, OK? What we're trying to share here is to get some facts, OK? Not opinions, not theories, but facts about what's actually happening on the calls and what are the things that are leading to success. Uh, it, it's a new frontier, and every day we're getting new insights. If you think about it, think about the Hubble telescope, what it opened up. For 100 years, people theorized whether the universe is expanding or collapsing. Big deal. A billion years from now. But only when they saw the first pictures, people had a straight answer. It is expanding, by the way. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in a little more universe for ours for discovery calls. And I have uh, seven data points that I think could be useful for your, uh, your teams. So let's start. Uh, first, how do we gather the data? What's the Hubble telescope that is zooming in on the insides and dynamics of discovery calls? So we're looking at hundreds of thousands of calls that they're first recorded. Second, transcribed automatically. There aren't people who would survive this kind of uh, gigantic effort. And then analyzed. Analyzed needs a little more explanation. So every call is scanned for hundreds of parameters. OK, for example, type of questions that salespeople ask, type of question that the customers ask, type of uh, uh, frequency of questions, topics of questions, talking to listen ratio, interruptions, sentiment, objections, language pattern, filler words, uh, and, and lots of other things uh, uh, about every call. And then you can run the stats, and you can find some pretty interesting in insights about what actually having, is having an impact on success rates. Quick trivia question. Filler words. A lot of sales managers are obsessed with filler words. It drives you nuts when you hear them on recordings, right? What? How big of an impact do they have on conversion rate of calls? Does anybody know? All right, so let's, let's kind of this. Close to zero. OK, it's something that everybody just is enamored with, but we found zero correlation between filler words and conversion rates of, of calls. Just It doesn't mean that they don't have any impact or there's nothing visible. So don't, don't sweat. Don't worry about it. Focus on things that are much more important. Uh, so let's talk about uh, some of the parameters that impact discovery calls. So here we compared across a large number of calls patterns that the top 20 reps are doing in terms of top 20 closers that others aren't doing. So first question is, how many questions should we be asking? Is, are more questions the better? Is it better? Uh, so generally speaking, the answer is, is yes. What you can see on the chart is uh, first the conversion rate in percentage, that's the y-axis, and number of questions per call. And generally speaking, there is a correlation between the number of questions uh, and the conversion rate. So more is better, but a lot more is not better. Okay, so it turns out that there is a number 
Okay? Ideally, the highest conversion number is 11 uh, to 14. I'll say that the duration of the calls here varies, okay, but uh, on average, it's about 45 minutes. Okay, there are calls that are longer, shorter, but that's the, the sweet spot. Beyond that, it's not only getting like marginal uh, uh, value, but actually it's becoming counterproductive. So 11 to 14 seems to be the sweet spot of, of num number of questions. Also, the first, the previous slide talked about questions, and it could be, how's it going? Uh, you know, what did you do last weekend? So type of question, but we've narrowed it down to business issue uh, questions, okay, that are unique to discovery calls, discovering pains, values, goals, all of that. Here, the difference is even uh, more pronounced. The top producers ask almost double the amount of questions that everybody else does, okay? So 10 uh, per hour versus six per hour. So the takeaway, more question and specifically more targeted questions. So not um, shocking, but it, it's good to have this data because there's a lot of debate sometimes with uh, account executives that they think that they've asked enough questions. Now you have a data point that you can show. Uh, typical call flow, okay? So again, what is, what is the dynamic? Uh, what does a typical agenda for a discovery call looks like? Uh, so we analyze how many questions are being asked, and this is, this is the call duration. So you can see average performers pretty front-loaded. So there are questions across the entire call, but it's more front-loaded. Here's where the best performers are. Okay, so a little bit at the beginning and a little more towards the end. So the way to think about it is should be less about interrogation and more like a conversation, let it flow. And, and uh, this is, again, theories that, that we all knew and thought, but the data actually confirms that that's a better converting flow. Don't just check the bosses. Uh, it just feels awful for, for prospects to go through that. So let's talk about talking, okay? When I started my career, probably 20, well, actually more, I was taught by my mentors that the listen to talk ratio should be two ears and one mouth. Okay, that should be about right. So 33 to 66, listening to talking. But now we actually, actually have data. And it turns out that the ratio isn't, isn't far off. Okay, so the data shows that the optimal ratio for preliminary calls is 46%, okay? 46 is the highest conversion rate. Doesn't mean that if, you, if you're at 47% talk time, you're not gonna sell or, or even 50. Uh, there could be successful call with a lot more, a lot less, uh, but that's the, the sweet spot between calls that convert better than others. Uh, and here is the same data but across salespeople, okay, so you can see not only the calls convert, but it's pretty consistent with the behavior of salespeople. Uh, top reps, average reps, bottom reps, okay? So here, more is less. Talking more is, is not good, all other things being equal. We also find that uh, talk time tends to be much higher at new reps, new hires. They talk, they're, not, they're more anxious to uh, give the entire spiel and pitch and, and, and tell more. Okay, the, the veterans ones are much more relaxed and, and take the time to, uh, to listen. Um, I would also say that um, most people speak a lot more than they think that they do, right? Most people think that they're above average about half of them are wrong, statistically, right? So same goes for talk time. I remember like first time I started seeing my own stats, I was at 70s and 80s and I thought I'm a pretty good listener. Turns out that I'm not as good, but uh, uh, it's something, try it yourself. Measure your own timing and, and, and see in your reps. It's a, it's a really good exercise. Back and forth engagement. So we, talk, we spoke about questions, about uh, number of talking, let's see how the interaction. So when, if I talk, let's say 46%, I mean, 
at one extreme, I could be talking for 46% of the time, then, go, uh, then there's another session by the customer. Uh, over here, we measured how many interactions, uh, how many speaker switches back and forth per minute versus success rate of the call. So you can see there is correlation. The more back and forth that is happening, so mostly uh, you can see that the highest conversion rate is about uh, 375, so every 15 seconds or so, speaker switch. So the way to think about it, if you look at the interaction from a, a different visual, um, it should look like this, not big chunks. Uh, and those would usually be on the account executive side. Long, long monologues without a pause, but a lot of back and forth. So it should be a lot more like ping pong than football. It's not about ball possession, but, but back and forth. Just swift, quick, very interactive, especially when you over the phone where you can't, uh, can't interact. Call flow. Okay, so we spoke about uh, interaction, about talking. Let's see what's the typical agenda for a call. So this is more or less without getting into um, specific timings that, that do vary across companies and industries. But this is a typical flow, uh, report building, thorough discovery of three to four business issues, and then closing and, and potential next steps. Okay, so the question is, why three or four? Why not five? Why not one? Why not two? Same thing again. It's just what the data shows. Okay, so here again, we measure the same thing, conversion rate, by the number of discovery questions asked in between the opening and the close. Turns out that three to four tends to be uh, to have the highest uh, success rate. Don't ask me why. I don't even know why. We don't presume to uh, to explain why, but this is what the data shows. Okay, so check your own discovery calls. See how many questions you're asking. If the rep thinks that they should be asking less or more, here is something that you can show. And this is what the data shows. That's optimal conversion rate. Uh, and then we spoke about what happens inside the. Um, the discovery call. Uh, let's talk about how long they should be. Okay, so most companies have anywhere between 30, 45, 60. If you're selling like big complex finding software, it could, could be more. And we looked at the correlation between success of the calls and the duration of the calls. And we found close to zero. Okay, so here, I mean, there, there's no gospel or any guidance, but the, the point is you could, you could do it whatever you want, okay? Just it doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever is right for your company, don't worry about it. There is one aspect that is important, okay, or, or it has a slight impact, no-show rate. Okay, so you, you get the, a better uh, turnout rate with shorter calls. Again, something that you probably know, but the data confirms. So if you don't need an hour, just schedule 30 minutes, you'll get more calls. And then as a bonus, something that uh, doesn't talk about how to have better calls, but how to have more calls that actually happen. Okay, and that's something that we looked at, the time that the call was scheduled for and the uh, no-show rate. Okay, it turns out that there's a pretty clear pattern. And later is better. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the no-show rate. You see it tends to be at the highest early on, 8 a.m., and tends to go down as you go through the day. Now, you're probably saying, well, I mean, what am I going to do with that, right? It's just, uh, are we going to send everybody to, uh, uh, for free time towards the morning? So probably not, right? There's not a whole lot that you can do, but there are a few things that you can. First, any non-phone time activities, try to schedule them in the morning so you don't waste precious time on customer-facing activities. Try to do them like later in the day. And, and second, all the things being equal, if you have a really important call that you need to happen, 
uh, for the quarter or the months or whatever, and it's a big deal, try to schedule in the afternoon. There's just, you get like better chances that the call will actually happen on time than if you schedule like at 9 a.m. Uh, there are also some differences on work days, uh, on, on the uh, days of week, but they're not as significant. But time of day does seem to have like a pretty big impact. So that's uh, six plus one data points that change some life. There, there's an infinite amount. We're just really scratching the surface right now, and we, we're coming up with new stuff anymore. If you want to get more of these, uh, by all means, they're published almost on a weekly basis, plus you can request. If there are topics that are interesting, we get requests for questions uh, all the time. We did an interesting study about difference with men and women behavior on calls that, that was very uh, uh, surprising and intriguing. You can see it over there. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any questions or, or want to share some of your experience, uh, this would be a good time. I did my long monologue. Now it's your turn to make it a little more interactive. Yeah, please, Bill. With, with what? We did not. Uh, we did not look. So the question was: Did we also find uh, a correlation between the time of day and the conversion rate? We we have not analyzed that, but that will be a very good topic to uh, to look into. Thank you. Yes, please. Ten. Do you have, uh, uh, you know, any uh, study in that? Uh, we we have not. But here's another very interesting question. So have we done? Uh, what's the best time to uh, to get a hold of, of someone? I mean, there 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 are studies that we haven't done and have been done before, more for dialing technology and all of that. Our folks are more like what's happening inside the conversation, but certainly something we can uh, can check. It's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Gentlemen at the front. So you talked about asking targeted questions, and then you also showed the graph that said the more back and forth, the better. Does that mean that the targeted questions should derive short answers, or is it better to have targeted answers that derive long answers? So there is um, something that we call uh, the big the, the first big orange, which is like a big block, usually when you Ask the customer, tell me why are you here? What problem you to take the call? That, that's a good idea to have long, and if you have like short bursts, should be maybe like confirmation, a hop, I see, okay? And, and then tell me more. So it should be like a one big streak when a customer is telling about the problem, and then should, uh, you should have a lot more interaction. So it's kind of like, uh, okay, go on, that's Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, customer talking for long is good, as long as they're on the right track, right? Uh, rep talking for a minute and a half is not good. Yes, thank you. Oh, sorry, one question. Please. Uh, did you find this data to be true for cold calls as well? I know it can be harder to get them talking, at least initially. This data uh, does not, uh, is not based on cold calls. Prospecting, these are discovery calls. So it has already been scheduled. We also have data on cold calls, but it's a different. Uh, none of that is included here. Is it generally more talking or more listening for cold calls? Do you recall? They, uh, are you asking about talk time on, on cold calls? I'm talking about like the, yeah, like who in the it, it, it tends to be longer, and, and there's probably justification for that uh, because you're trying to get a foot in the door and you're trying to talk. Uh, so it'll probably be, I, I don't have it, but it's probably, it's going to be more than 46% talk time. And that's probably the right thing to do. For your uh, research, what was the, the data point that challenged the, the previous way or the preconceptions of selling? Sorry, would you mind repeating the question? So the data point, what was the aha moment that you found um, the, you know, that challenged the previous way of thinking that sales leaders would say, okay, this is how you do things, but the data really challenged that, that surprised you and your team? Um, 
almost ev everything here is surprising. Sometimes it's things that, uh, so we've, I mean, when we do it, uh, there's things that are company specific. So we almost always find things that the sales leaders know. What they don't know is how frequently that behavior is actually happening within the team, right? That 95 of the sales team is doing something that they know is not optimal. All right, so that, that is, uh, I think most of the things here that make sense, right, to most people that should ask more questions, uh, not, not a lot. So it's not, but the behavior, how, how many salespeople do not follow that is what most, I find most surprising. Yes, we have time probably for one or two more. Please. The data be uh, what is the difference between men and women on discovery calls? Okay, so you've asked. Uh, we have, it's, it's pretty detailed on, on, on the blog, but we found that women uh, interrupt more, they talk more, and they convert more. Okay, so contrary to almost everything that I've told you now, okay, and, uh, but it works. I mean, we were talking about uh, average, so there is like significant difference in how much they interrupt, and there is a, a great discussion on, on LinkedIn like, why that happens, and we don't even like pretend to, uh, to know why, we just know what the facts are, but we found the conversion rates were better, even though the behavior was not identical, and, and I, somehow worse, quote unquote. Yeah. Any more? All right, thank you all very much. Hope you enjoy the show, and uh, see you around.